So previously I mentioned about push notifications. So push notification is about sending an update uh, about a running process to the user. So a running process can be a chat conversation and you get a push notification which is an update. Someone posted a message in that chat conversation. <coughs> or you can get an, an update about the status of a football match. Uh, someone uh, just score, uh, scored a goal. So basically the push is sending snapshots, events, uh, related to a more a stream of, uh, of data. And we have been thinking we, we should be able to do, to do much better and with iOS 6 and with uh, the latest Android, you can now have a kind of uh, space on your phone which is dedicated to giving you directly the current state uh, of an event. So taking about a football match, for example, what you want to see is the current score. You don't want to, to uh, you may not want to get the alert, but just see uh, what is the current score uh, uh, for, for that match. So that's what we're, we have been trying to model on top of our boxcar platform. So this is, uh, when I talk about widgets, this is what I, I'm talking about. This is uh, the two-day view on iOS. This is the place where you can have states about uh, things that are happening. Uh, on Android, you have ongoing notification, so you can have a, a stock, uh, uh, yes, yeah, pointers uh, on directly on your uh, on your notification center. And uh, what we wanted to do is that uh, we would turn Boscar. We we use the push sent by our customers to be able to recompose all the states uh, of uh, of an event and be able to give the user at any moment of time a snapshot of that, uh, of that event. What is the current state of that uh, ongoing stuff? So for example, uh, for football match, uh, you can have Manchester Arsenal. We manage the event on the server. We will track, for example, a kickoff, goal, half time score, uh, result. And the idea is that you can push update to, to, to subscriber and you can send the alert to the people that want to get notified as soon as the event happens, or just display the current state on the, on the widget uh, for the user that only care about uh, following that, but when they, when they want, uh, don't want to be disrupted. So how it works, so I show you, I've shown you previously uh, the kind of push notification we send uh, in Boxcar, and this is quite similar to uh, to the one uh, we have been uh, I have been uh, showing you previously. The only thing is that in the same push notification, we are sending widget data directly in that push. So we are sending the alert. What do we want to display on the alert for users that are interesting in getting alerted? And you send as at the same time the final state regarding that event. So you can display for the user either the alert, the widget, or both. So that's, that's the idea, and that's what, that's what we do for, uh, for that platform. So from a, it means that from a single notification and, and a single data source, for the, for the developer of the application, the only, the only thing the backend has to do is, is send a single call to our server, and it will generate both the alert and the, the update of the, of the widget state uh, in the, in the two-day view. And what we are doing in the SDK is we are packaging all the art part. So I don't know if you have tried to, to use a two-day widget uh, extension, but it is, it's quite painful to, to write. So uh, what, we, what we do is that we handle the subscription, the preference of user, what does the user want to, to receive, we store the state of the, uh, on the server. We, d we distribute the data at, the, at a massive scale on, in real time. We cache the data locally, locally on the device because the widget itself cannot receive any data. Basically, when you send that kind of notification, it gets to the app itself. So maybe just if you, 
never heard about how widgets are implemented on iOS. Basically, when you deploy an application which contains a widget, you are sending to the phone two applications. You are sending the main application, and you are sending an, ex an extension, which is another application. And they are uh, running completely separately from each other. So they cannot talk to each other. They are different process, and they cannot interfere with each other. So the only way you can make them communicate is to, uh, to communicate through a, a shared space uh, on the disk. So we take care of that. We take care about having the, the application, which is the only one that can receive data from the network. So the application receives data. We, store, we prepare them, and we store them in a form that is uh, reusable by the widget itself. And when you display the widget, the only thing that the widget can do is look, look in that share space and display the content. So for the developers, it, it becomes very easy. You just have to look at the data that are on disk and, uh, and display them. And uh, this is basically a, uh, just a view. So you have field. You, you design your view in the widget like a normal, a normal view. And you can just link uh, the JSON field you have seen previously in the payload, so you can have the score of team one go in that label, the score of team two go in that label. You can have uh, uh, images, local images uh, for uh, Arsenal uh, to show uh, uh, the, yes, the, the flag of the, of, the, of the team. So you can do everything uh, pretty easily just by parsing JSON and, and do what you would normally do. So the hard part is handled for you. And we handle expiration because uh, when the event is over, you want the widget data to disappear after some point, so we, we, we do the cache cleanup and, and all the thing. So basically, again, little, uh, little demo. Basically, I have my back end in the terminal window. I'm sending uh, a notification, uh, uh, and we see that this is a Manchester goal. We see that we have received the notification, but we see that we also have the data uh, updated, uh, updated directly in the widget. So when it's rendered, it queries the state, and uh, uh, Manchester Arsenal 1-0 appears. I will send from the back end a second notification, which is Arsenal uh, scoring as well. You get the notification on, on, on the mobile, and you see that uh, the state has been updated, the share state has been updated, and everything is in, is in place, and you have 1-1 one, one Manchester Arsenal. So everyone is happy, and uh, I, I won't make uh, myself any enemy uh, in the UK. <laughs> so uh, that's it again for, for this uh, presentation. So we have talked about uh, the use of push to bring users to chat. We have talked about uh, being able to show constantly personal information that matter directly in your notification center. And the thing I would like, last thing I would like to show you is that basically all we did for uh, the notification center, ongoing notification to the view, can be reused directly for watches. So this kind of uh, small device, uh, the one from Google, the one from Apple, they will be able to reuse the same data, reuse the, kind, same of, uh, the same kind of mechanism to display uh, data on the watch. So either, uh, either notifications, alerts vi with vibration on the watch, or ongoing notification, which is card for Android, or um, which is glances, called glances for in, a, in iOS world. So any, again, without any change in the back end, uh, uh, the developers will be able to address uh, the watch as well when they will be, uh, they will be uh, deployed. So basically, I I've done a small prototype. So uh, I've played, uh, Apple has released uh, the watch uh, kit SDK uh, in November, so uh, uh, two or three weeks ago. And I tried to play with it to, to be able to, to, to make a, a kind of small experiment on that. And basically, for now, 
it's a, it's a bit uh, difficult to, to, to see, but uh, the, the rendering you can get on the watch is, uh, yeah, feels a bit rough and, uh, and quite disappointing. I've been trying to render notification, and notification are, uh, they are uh, there is ellipse mark, so you don't see fully the labels. So I think there is still some work to do on, the, on that, so that it feels, uh, it feels uh, really, really polished. So I can demo you something just to show. I cannot demo you on, uh, on real hardware. I cannot send real notification because in the, in the SDK, uh, you, don't, you cannot receive push notification. Only devices, real devices, can uh, receive push notification. So if you're developing uh, and expect to uh, introduce notification in your apps, you won't be able to test that in the simulator on your, on your laptop. You will have to use a real, uh, or a real device for that. And so, so I have to, to use a simulator for that. And basically, the kind of things Oh, oh, the screen is low, res. <gasps> I don't know if I can scale down, but basically this is, this is the app, and uh, this is what the SDK provides you with, which is, uh, where is it? External display, and you can, should be able to display a watch. Ah, here is it. And you can run, for example, a glance. Oh, this is still better, as you see. The DK is uh, re really having trouble. So let me try to run it again. Here is it. So basically, a glance is just that you have labels. So I can show you basically watch kit is here. You. Where is the storyboard? So basically, you design glance notification uh, with a storyboard, and basically all you can do is put very simple label images on the screen, and there is not much you, you can do with it. So I think that, that's it for the demo, because there is not much yet to show in terms of push notification and getting update from the server. But basically, what I wanted to demonstrate is that with the same SDK, I can display the same kind of info on the watch that I display on the uh, two-day extension and that uh, I get from uh, an alert coming from the, from the broadcast. <laughs>